St. Maximilian was the founder of the Militia of the Immaculata, and he is a saint in the Roman Catholic Church. Maybe it's not a bad time to explain a little incident that happened to him when he was a boy. Because his mother and father had to work as weavers, they had to leave home, and as the oldest child, he was put in charge of the household and given basically two jobs by his mother. One, watch the soup that it didn't burn, and secondly, to watch his little brother. So mama comes home and wouldn't you know that first of all, the soup was burned and his little brother was nowhere to be found. And the mother, as all mothers want to say, exclaimed to him, Raymond, what is gonna become of you? He was a very sensitive boy, and this touched his heart deeply with sorrow. And he ran off to the local church before the statue of Our Lady, and he threw himself down on his knees, and he asked her a question. What is to become of me? Our Lady appeared to him and offered him two crowns. One, the white crown of purity, and the red crown of martyrdom. And in a kind of burst of generosity, the little boy said, I choose both. And that became, in a certain sense, the remote way that he would ultimately found the Militia of the Immaculata. How did it all start? In 1917, at the same time Our Lady of Fatima was appearing to the little children, St. Maximilian Kolbe was in Rome as a seminarian getting his formation. And what happened? He saw the Masons marching in the front of St. Peter saying that Satan is going to reign. So he saw this great demonstration against the church. And he says, okay, they have an army that wants to destroy the teachings of the faith. So I am going to try to create a spiritual army that's gonna counteract this. And so he decides as this young man to start the Militia Immaculate. As the movement started with the MI, his example must have been extraordinary because he started to gather other young men to follow him, the trust in Mary, and the making a consecration to Our Lady. So all these friars started coming and he wanted to start out right away with evangelization. So he started to create printing presses, distribution, and, and not only did he do magazines, then he went into books. I mean, he was just a very brilliant genius of a man. So he had a lot of order compared to a lot of other men. He had a million people subscribing to his magazine. In Japan, he did the same thing. He started up a monastery there. And if you think about it, with the Knights of the Immaculata, we just continue to do that work. In Brazil, they've got a TV station, they got radio going. We're carrying on that work of the Knights of the Immaculata using the media. So really, Father Colby was ahead of his time. The MI is a way to express that missionary discipleship by giving ourselves to Our Lady, to the Immaculata, and becoming her instruments in the conversion and sanctification of others. And so when people want to be formed in the image of Christ, the best way is to do it through Mary because Jesus was formed in her womb. And so she forms us so that we can be those instruments for the evangelization of others. Maximilian, wanted to establish the kingdom of the most sacred heart of Jesus through the MI. And so we who are consecrated to Our Lady can be allowed to be instruments in that. First, beginning with ourselves. That conversion and sanctification has to begin with ourselves. Then those around us. And then Maximilian says, the entire world. So I try to have blessed medals with chains if possible because otherwise you give it to the person and they can't wear it. I have them in my purse, in the car, and when I meet someone or when it seems appropriate to give someone, a homeless person or anyone, a medal, I tell them my name, talk to them, 
learn a little bit about them and then explain something about the medal that I just try to keep it simple that marries your mother in heaven. She's looking out for you. She'll help you and works miracles and wear it and, and see what happens. Consecration is about you and Mary, and it is about your commitment to Mary and Mary's commitment to you. It's simply giving yourself to Our Lady in the manner that Jesus, he came into the world uh, in the incarnation through Mary. And so we want to come to Christ through, with, and in Mary. And by giving ourselves to her, we become closer to Christ because she brings us to Christ. She forms Christ in our souls and she brings us into deeper union with him. Consecration to Mary is surrender, which is kind of scary for people, but I personally find so much peace in consecration and in just surrendering myself to Mary and God. There's a comfort in that. There's, there's a great deal of comfort in not having, not having it be on your shoulders. I personally stress out about a lot of things, but it's like, well, I can turn to Mary. Mary's there for me. I don't have to worry, like she's got my back. Our ladies, at one level, very, very much like, you have to put your work in for me. Like, you're going to earn this. I'm not going to do it all for you. But at the other hand, she's like, I can uh, win some things over. I can, I can do some things. I'm a skeptical person by nature, but I could see the people around me that had already made their consecration, and I could tell they were authentic. And I just said, okay, I'm gonna do it, and I don't, I don't fully understand it. So there was a leap of faith. And I'm glad I did, because ever since I made my consecration, things just started happening in my life that are providential. There's no other word for it. St. Maximilian said, you're the paintbrush. You just need to be a docile <laughs> paintbrush and let her do her work and trust that this is going to make a beautiful picture in the end. Anybody who's made their consecration has united their will to her will. And it's uh, we're led by her. And it's very powerful and humbling as well. When we're baptized into the church, we're baptized into Christ, Christ becomes our brother. But through consecration, we acknowledge Mary as our mother. We give ourselves to her totally, as St. Maximilian would say, so that we can give ourselves totally to Christ. So when I was 16, I decided to have a monthly group um, who met at my house to pray the rosary. I knew what Mom and Mary had done in my life and how she was such a strong supporter. And so I thought that other teens would like to experience her as a mother as well. I felt that pursuing Mary would aid in pursuing Christ. And that's why my friends, my peers, keep coming back because they know that the rosary is powerful and they know that it will ultimately bring us closer to Christ. Mothers are so powerful. Uh, everyone has a mother and hopefully everybody has a good mother. There's nothing that can replace a mother, nothing that can in any manner, shape or form create that climate of happiness and security uh, that a mother is. She helps me when I'm down, when I need an extra little boost. She's there for me. She never, never turns her back and I love her very much. And the thing about a mother is you don't love everybody the same way. It's not different levels, it's just different approaches. That's how I feel her in my life, using even my weaknesses, using tendencies I have, using strengths, and also helping me not to be afraid to go into the unknown. There was a second vocation for Mary. She was not only called to be the mother of Jesus, but at the cross, we see in St. John's Gospel, 
Jesus as his dying gift to us. He gives his mother to the whole world. One of the ways in which she mothers us is she helps us grow closer to the Lord, to Christ, and she also helps us become more like Christ. So through Mary, Christ is almost like, you might almost say, reborn in our souls, in us. I think a person whose faith is weak or doesn't have it is drawn to Our Lady as we are drawn to our own earthly mothers, because there we can always find a home. And that is exactly what she means to me, that I have this heavenly mother who keeps me in touch with her son. The knowledge that that is so, that she can lead us to Christ, that she can, like a good mother, speak for us to God and advocate for us and bear witness to the fact that she knows us and that we are hers, we can always find the love that we know and hope we deserve. And so Mary leads us, as only a mother can, into a more spiritual, deepened relationship, and she uses us because her mission didn't end upon her assumption into heaven. It continues uh, within the church through us, through her children. Well, we see that the MI has spread all over the world. And what is it doing? Well, its primary mission, basically, is to introduce to people the reality of total consecration to Our Lady, place ourselves in her hands, and promote the gospel and the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. St. Maximilian Kolbe really gave us an example of how to operate the Knights of the Immaculata. He didn't want you to be an exclusive group. He wanted to work with other organizations. And that was something that I embraced big time with the promotion of Catholic radio and media. It can be an individual thing that's done by everyone all over the church. And it makes sense because you, all you're doing is showing your respect and dedication to Our Lady to let her son be known. The importance of belonging to the MI and not just going off on your own and doing whatever. There's power in the unity of prayer. And the sort of mission or purpose of the group is to bring people to Jesus and into intimacy with Jesus through Mary. Maximilian envisioned the members of the Immaculata to be anywhere, inserted in every field of action. Everything about the Immaculata, about the total consecration, if it's lived well, if it's lived daily, leads to that, to be another Christ in the world. So we want to win the world for the Immaculata, to win the world for Christ.